Over the last decade, the Freeride World Tour has established itself as the world's most prestigious big mountain skiing and snowboarding competition. The 2020 tour started this January in Japan and travels over three continents with a total of five stops. After visiting Kicking Horse in Golden BC, Canada, the tour now heads to Europe, to Ordino Arcalis in Andorra. Big drops and deep powder will challenge the riders in Fieberbrunn, Austria, and then the grand final invites the world's best to the Swiss freeride mecca of Verbier. The third stop of the 2020 Freeride World Tour takes the riders to Ordino Arcalis in the Pyrenees. Known as the most remote ski resort in Andorra with a summit elevation of 2,625 metres. The town of Ordino has a history stretching back to the 9th century and today it has a population of just over 5,000 people. Andorra is a landlocked sovereign microstate deep in the mountain range of the Pyrenees. These huge and rocky summits form the natural border between France and Spain, with peaks reaching nearly three and a half thousand metres. The maritime climate is not as cold as the Alps. Ordino's average temperature in winter is minus two degrees Celsius, due in the main to the influence of the Bay of Biscay. The snow conditions and the weather in Ordino Arcalis this year are miserable. Rumours circulate that the contest might be cancelled due to the bad conditions of the venue. But the riders can't let this affect them. They must stay positive, so instead of getting frustrated, they have a session at the local fun park. Yeah. Meanwhile, there is now clarity regarding the contest. After twice being postponed, fresh snow means there will be some serious riding in Ordino Arcalis this year. Yeah, so we're here in Andorra looking at the face right now. Had super fun here last year, so I'm excited to be here again and ski this face. Uh, a lot of options, so we'll see what we find. The venue is a fun venue. We need a little bit more snow. It's still a little spicy. Pretty excited for tomorrow. A lot of good landmarks on this face, so that's, that's pretty nice. It starts snowing gently, and the organisers give the go-ahead for the next day. It's time to check the face. There are two different starting points on Quas Metros. The first on the left summit has a height of 2,570 metres and the second start is at 2,530. The finish is at 2,180 metres. The face has an angle of 43 degrees, a short, fast descent demanding precision and edge control from the riders. After an uncertain wait, everyone is looking forward to getting the contest underway. The last stop in Kicking Horse Canada was a huge success. In the women's ski competition, Elizabeth Gerritsen from Switzerland took third place. She attacked the face with her signature brand of powerful, fast skiing. It gave her a solid points haul and secured her third place. Second was the reigning world champion, Ariana Tricomi of Italy. Showcasing her stylish, relaxed skiing, Ariana opened her run with what is fast becoming her trademark, a clean 360 off the top cornice. She was rewarded with second place in Canada. Jessica Hotter, the rookie from New Zealand, took the win in British Columbia. Taking the high traverse, she dropped early, straight off the top, grabbing the judges' attention right from the start. She then cut into one of the most technical and exposed areas of the face and stomped the cliff to the enjoyment of the judges. The reward, first place. Ariana Tricomi, the defending champion, was carrying an ankle injury when she arrived in Ordino Arcalis. 
Without the injury, might she have thrown a 360 off this opening drop? Only she knows. But again, she showcased that very, very smooth, stylish skiing. But it was a slightly less aggressive line than we're used to seeing from Ariana. She nearly got bucked shutting down speed for one drop. And that might have cost her, but it was still a line packed with stylish airs and turns. A solid 65-67 for the Italian. Jacqueline Pollard out of Alta, Utah, arrived in the Pyrenees knowing that she needed a solid result to qualify for the finals in Verbier. She attacked the face, but she was also very, very clean and consistent. Second in 2019 and Rookie of the Year, she struggled to find her feet in 2020, but this run will do a lot to settle her nerves. A 69 and fifth position for the American. Next, the winner from Kicking Horse from Ruapehu on New Zealand's North Island. Looking to back up that win in Canada with another consistent run. After the top section, she headed skiers left out into the playground. Starting to build speed and momentum, she took on this drop out to the far skiers left and then hooked back towards this cliff band. She managed to thread the needle and find the best part of that landing transition a very fast, clean run. 72 points for the New Zealander and fourth place. Next, it was the turn of last year's winner in Verbier and the owner of two third places after Japan and Canada. So consistency for Elizabeth Gerritsen. Nice drop to open up at the top. Saw her then open the afterburners and really start to build speed. Finding her way onto the biggest cliff band. It had claimed scalps already, but Gerritsen held on to the landing. Her stomping legs well and truly attached. And the Swiss would claim another solid result here in Andorra. Yet another third place for Elizabeth Gerritsen. one of the biggest cliffs of the venue and I stomped it so that's positive uh, I ended up in third again which is last of the first but I'm still stoked to end on the podium Jackie Passo is one of the veterans of the women's tour and like her husband Rene Barkred is only getting better with age sending it off that top lip and then doubling down she then tore into some huge turns before attacking the same big drop that we saw Elizabeth Gerritsen take on. She stomped it and she went bigger. She finished off with this bottom feature. Another clean run for the American and a very strong score. 78.33 points for Jackie Passo. Good enough for second place. I mean, I was able to stick on my landings. I had... Um, a bit of a surprise kick off the top, so it kind of like forced me into doing a big spread to kind of keep my balance again. But overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Back up at the top, and it's the Olympic mogul skier turned free rider Norwegian Hedvig Vessel, who was looking to make amends for a disappointing line in Canada. She'd won in Japan and set off instantly to the steepest section of the face, the skiers left. Taking the same drop as Elizabeth Gerritsen, she then tracked into the same line as Evelina Nielsen, using that speed to throw in the backflip that worked to devastating effect in Hakuba. She then tracked down with a couple of conservative drops, making sure she was clean and consistent. She nearly got bucked by this icy takeoff at the end, but was able to keep her way over the front of the skis and survive that scare. The backflip working so, so hard with the judges. And the final score coming in at 83 points. Good enough for first place for Hedvig Vessel. It was fun to get down. It was pretty difficult the conditions was like mixed it was really good snow and then it was like really crusty on the takeoffs so I was a bit surprised in some of the jumps I was like oh it got out of control but I think I managed to like 
have a fluid run and with my backflip that definitely was a highlight. Um, so I was, uh, yeah, I was also pretty lucky with the weather. I had good light and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here now. <laughs> So Hedvig Vessel at the top of the standings again. Jackie Passo in second. Gerritsen takes her third, third of the season. Jess Hotter still in the mix. And Jackie Pollard rounds out the top five. Ariana Tricomi down there in sixth. So how does that affect the overall standings? Daylight between Vessel and Tricomi at the top. Hotter, Gerritsen, Passo and Pollard all still very much in touch with the title. The second event in Canada was won by Marion Haerty. No surprises there. She showed fast, solid riding all the way through and took on three features on the ozone face. She kicked off with some strong turns and a healthy cliff. Haerty was joined on the podium by the Canadian Claudia Avon. The Whistler local was a wildcard entry but showed no nerves as she tore into a confident line with a big, fast air to finish. Third in kicking horse was the American Erica Vikander. She convinced the judges with a half cab off the top cornice and then backed that up with some super stylish turns through the midsection of the face and some perfect ball control off this drop. So Marion Haerty won every single event last year and has won both events this winter. Her domination in the women's snowboard category has been absolute and she started this run in a very strong position, taking on one of the steepest sections of the face with a nice clean drop. From here though, you could say that it's not the same aggressive run that we're used to seeing from Marion. It was clean and it was solid, but by her standards, it could have been judged to have been a little bit relaxed. One of the dangers of dominating a field the way that Marion has is that the judges won't compare you to the other riders. Instead, they'll compare you to your own very high standards. Finishing with a 75.67, Haerty had to settle for third. My run today was not really crazy, I think. I made a mistake, I got stuck uh, in the middle, and that's okay. Uh, it's going to be make challenging more for the next stage in Austria. One of the local riders, Nuria Castan Baron, was desperate to make an impression here in Andorra. She'd sent her run in Japan and crashed out, and then she played it too safe in Kicking Horse, meaning that she needs a result if she wants to ride in the grand final in Verbier. She took on one of the steepest sections of the face at the top and then got technical with two cliffs in the middle of the face. This one, the bigger of the two. But it was the bottom section of the face that really caught the judge's eye. She worked her way just to the left-hand side of the main gut of the Quince Metros and then found this little double Difficult to get into, but no one else touched it, and it paid huge dividends for the Spaniard, stomping both of those and riding clean into the finish. 79 points for Castan Baron and second place. I just wanted to have fun, enjoy the powder, do like turns, like slashes, and just have so much fun here in Alcali, so I'm just Happy to put my run down and sit on my feet and do what I wanted to do and enjoy and get a good result. Next, it was the turn of Michaela Davis Meehan, the slope star rider turned free rider after a nasty break in her back. She showed her freestyle smarts at the top with a front side air off the top cliff, landing it very, very solidly. She then went in and popped off this rock in the middle of this pinch shoot, which really impressed the judges and turned some heads amongst the spectators as well. Some solid turns right the way down into the finish. And after writing off her event in Kicking Horse, this was the reboot she needed. Michaela Davis Meehan giving the judges no excuses and they rewarded her with the top score of the day, 80.33. It was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I was a bit worried um, day one when we first originally was going to have the competition. I just thought this place would be a write-off. And then you get up today and it's powder day! 
That's our overall results. The Australian in first. Nuria Castan Baron just behind in second. Marion Hayati knocked off the top spot for the first time in two seasons. So overall, still Hayati has a commanding lead, but Davis Meehan is reeling her in. Erica Vikander is in third. Unfortunately, the weather closed in and the men's snowboarding was cancelled. The event will still run, but it will be on a spare day in Fieberbrunn. We sat down with the most successful freeride world tour snowboarder of the last five years, Sammy Lubke. Name's Sammy Lubke. I've been on the tour for now, it's my eighth year. Yeah, I've had ups and downs. I've had uh, a few years getting close to reaching the title and then uh, three years straight of winning it. And uh, kind of the last couple years have just been just having fun. What's kept me coming back for more is probably just the excitement. People we compete with are like friends, family, you know, like, so coming back to see them and traveling to all these places, but still exciting competing against like such young, hungry kids these days. So I guess that kind of keeps you going. Yeah, Andorra is rad. Uh, it's definitely a place that um, I never thought I'd come to, but uh, honestly, I was so happy to be able to come here because the people are so nice, like such a beautiful country. And yeah, I've had, I mean, on the snow, competing wise, I've had good and bad years, but um, it's always easy to come back just because the good vibes here. Yeah. The after party is pretty, pretty nice. Always karaoke. The best thing to look forward to after winning here is karaoke. Let's take a quick recap of the men's ski category from Kicking Horse. Andrew Pollard started from gate two. And then from there, he headed out on the skier's left traverse and straight off a huge cliff. He used a 360 to transition off into the playground. Then after a couple of smaller features, he lined up a blind drop that he sent long and deep. Third place from the man from Utah. Carl Regner Eriksson took second place, also setting off from start number two. He headed out to the far skier's left of the face, a backflip and two beautiful 360s, ensuring his run stood out. The winner in Canada, though, was another Swede, Christopher Turdell. Showed the fastest line of the day with immaculate control and a sizable cliff to finish. In one of the most hard-fought categories, he gave the judges an easy decision in Canada. So Andrew Pollard to open here in Ordino Arcalis. He's the current leader because of his consistency, a fourth in Japan and a third in kicking horse. Off that top lip with a very, very clean 360. Doubled down off the next cliff. Nearly lost his balance and then cut into this playground area, sending it long and fast. By far the biggest standout of his run though, after that Daffy, was this last feature. Lily padding taking off behind the cliff and then dragging his tips on that little pad of snow there. A fantastic run for Apol. 88 points, good enough for sixth. Twelve years on tour and counting, the 2012 world champion Rainer Barkred out of Sweden is still teaching the younger generation a thing or two about free riding and pushing them hard. He climbed his way out to the left-hand side of the face to drop into the steepest section. He greased it with ease and then set up for this huge backflip. The mayor of Stomptown with his signature landing there he then weaved through the rocks to set up this cliff. A flat landing, but he found every angle of the transition it had to offer and then sent it through the flats with one last feature. Once again, the Swede giving the judges no choice but to mark him up, an 88.67 for Barkred. Carl 
Renval was on the Freeride World Tour back in 2017, but he dropped off without re-qualifying. He's worked hard to get back on the tour in 2020, and this year he means business, no doubt about it. He attacked the top section of the face like a man possessed and managed to hold on to this 360 despite an incredibly poppy takeoff that tried its best to throw him off balance. He then threaded the needle through these sections and sent this cliff long and deep. It was one of the meatiest double drops that anyone had seen on the face. And Val finished it off with some very strong confidence skiing. 89.67 for Renval and fourth place. Like the two Swedes before him, Christopher Turdell, the 2018 world champ, decided to head out to the steeper left-hand side of the drop-in. And to give you an idea of the nerves of steel this man possesses, he did not hesitate dropping into this. He then made the best of a rickety run-in to the same kicker both Renval and Barkrid had hit, stomping the backflip, but rather than take skier's right line here, he headed out further to the left and opted for another backflip. He sat back on the landing, but made amends instantly by tracking down into this technical area and taking off early to send a huge drop into a perfect landing. Judges rewarding him with a 90.67, which would be good enough for third. So the visibility wasn't the best, but snow was amazing. So uh, yeah, that's what I take away from it. It was coming into the back foot, especially. We we're like always looking for the landing. You want to see it as early as possible. But now we're just like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, there it is. <laughs> the Californian who plies his trade in Alta, Utah, Isaac Freeland, has been creating a lot of chat on tour this year because of his freestyle repertoire. We hadn't seen it in the competition until that switch Misty 5 into the mute grab opened this run. He then backed up that stunning top section with a very fast midsection and made his way out of the playground section where he showcased a daffy into this technical cliff to finish. It was a very, very strong run from Freeland and a statement of intent as to the direction we could see free riding heading in the very near future. 91.67 and second place for Freeland. Well, I wanted to add some more freestyle aspects in this run because it was kind of more of a like steppy venue. So I did, and it went pretty well. Although I bailed on a couple tricks because of uh, the takeoffs were pretty windblown and icy. The first event back from a nasty ankle injury for Leo Slem, it meant that there were very low expectations from the Shaman Yard. Like Turdell, Barkred, and Renval before him, he headed out to that steep drop-in on the left-hand side. Took it steady and moved his way across. There was no sign of any injury though. So he made his way into that first lip, a huge backflip, sat back slightly, and made his way out to the same cliff that we saw Turdell hitting to great effect. Turdell used a second backflip, but instead, Slemmit boxed clever and used a 360. Plenty of variety in the air and style options. Still with plenty of speed, he soaked up that last cliff and sent it with a perfect landing. The judges rewarding a high-speed descent with a 93.67 and first place. I had my run in mind for a few days already. So I was not so stressed because the goal for me, to be honest, was to end, end up in the top five, six today, to be still in the game for the Camp in Austria, then maybe Verbier. Then, no, oh, I ended up on the top of the box, so it's like, unbelievable. No, I'm really stoked. Really, 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 really. <laughs> So a fairy tale return to competition for the Frenchman Leo Slemmit. And a first podium for Isaac Freeland, the American, just ahead of Christopher Turdell. Carl Renville and Rene Barkred hold off the four Americans, Pollard, the Nichols brothers, and Tanner Hall. Local man Imar Navarro rounds out the top 10. Some big, big names held further down the rankings though. Hank Billis, Drew Tabke, and Jan Rousis, all looking to improve, as are Craig Murray, Blake Marshall and Vardek Gorek.
So let's take a look at the overall standings in this huge field. Christopher Turdell up in top spot. Andrew Pollard's consistency still paying dividends. Isaac Freeland's first podium helping him into the top three spots. Leo Slemmer in 11th place with just one result. Keep an eye on him. But a lot of work to do for the rest of the names on this list if they want to make it to the grand final in Verbier. So no doubt the Freeride World Tour in Ordino Arcalis was a weather adventure, but it delivered big lines, impressive drops, and some incredible tricks from all of the riders. Now the third stop of the tour is completed and everybody is looking to the Austrian Alps and the legendary Wildsee Loderface in Fieberbrunn. <laughs> 